Hello and welcome at the GCP Mindset Channel. Today I have an interview with Dr. Joanna Marskopiak and we speak about one of the most underestimated countries of the EU. We speak about Poland. Hello and hello Andreas. Thank you for the invitation. It's great to be here with you today. Yeah, thanks for being here. Joanna, thank you for being here to speak with me about the conduct of clinical studies in Poland. But maybe we can talk a little bit more about yourself. Where do you come from? Uh, I was born in Gdynia, a beautiful city at the seaside in Poland, where I have lived for almost my whole life before I moved uh, abroad a few years back. And I studied uh, first in Poland uh, biotechnology of pharmaceuticals. Then I moved abroad to pursue my PhD in biochemistry and then finally started in the clinical trials business. Thanks, very interesting. Let's share some information about Poland. Why is Poland so interesting for clinical research? What is interesting is that Poland ranks seventh in Europe regarding the amount of clinical trial applications to the regulatory authority. But what is more important is that potential is to double the amount of clinical trials in Poland regarding its population, which is almost 38 million people. And Polish patients are somehow more motivated to take part in a clinical trial and it can be due to the fact that while participating in a clinical trial, the access to the medical treatment that they have is of a higher standard than standard of care. And a great care is also taken to raise awareness among potential patients in Poland because the word medical experiment is usually not associated well. So now, for example, there's an initiative, patient-friendly clinical trials, thanks to which um, information about clinical trials is available to everyone provided by um, experts. What's more, in Poland there are many investigators that are educated and motivated. There are also highly motivated clinical trial sites, which ensures uh, high quality data being uh, collected, as well as the safe conduct of the trial. And additionally, uh, clinical trials in Poland have an attractive cost compared to Western Europe. It cannot be expected to be outstandingly lower, but it's still attractive. Cool. Um, you mentioned already the investigators, which are extremely motivated. Um, what kind of investigators do you involve in clinical trials? Do you have more the private clinics or GPs or university hospitals? More and more investigators and sites are involved in clinical trials in Poland. Years back, the trials were mainly conducted at the hospitals and clinics, and they are still involved, and there are more than 1,000 hospitals in Poland now. However, today, also outpatient facilities, and there are more than 21,000 of those, as well as private and non-public sites are involved, which means that general practitioners as well as investigators from different specialties can participate. That sounds great. Um, the number of investigators really impressive. But what's with their experience and education? Do you have something like a legal requirement for training, like we have in Germany, eight hours training, uh, for example? Training is a must and investigators in Poland are obliged by law to conduct a clinical trial accordingly to ICGCP. And then of course their knowledge of ICGCP needs to be documented as a certificate. Most certificates they have an expiration date that means that the refreshment courses are also required. And a great care is taken also that other site staff members are qualified and trained, for example, uh, members of the site staff that are handling the samples, they need to have YATA certificates. But what's more is also that the training sessions, symposia are organized for the investigators to make sure that they are properly prepared for the conduct of the trial. And what's more is that also clinical trials are also a part of uh, most of the specialization programs for doctors. Okay, but is it checked by the ethics committees or is it just um, a matter of inspections when a training certificate is missing? It is checked by ethics committees because it needs to be ensured that the investigators are properly trained. 
Okay, let's talk about the medical indications for which Poland is excellent in terms of clinical research. I, I mean, 20 years ago, I can remember uh, that we could do everything in Poland. You know, the recruitment rates were always perfect, especially in um, asthma studies, um, for example, or COPD. But I think it changed because also this country became more modern. Um, What's nowadays? What kind of studies can be done well in Poland? One needs to remember that Poland is a developed country, so we cannot expect indications that are characteristic for the underdeveloped ones. And Poland is a market of oncological research. It ranks first when it comes to registration of new projects, uh, but also other areas of medicine are present in large numbers, and this is neurology, pulmonology, cardiology, rheumatology, uh, as well as gastroenterology. And um, in Poland, uh, studies of phase 3 and phase 2 predominate. In 2018, it was 57% and 32% respectively. Okay. And um, if you would ask me what are the most common diseases in Poland, well, it's uh, ischemic heart disease, um, lung cancer, diabetes, but also high morbidity is observed due to uh, colorectal cancer, breast cancer and pneumonia. Okay, so the typical indications which can be found in the Western European countries as well. As well, yes. Okay, Jana, you told me already that the ethics committees need to um, approve also the training certificates of the investigators. Can you tell me a little bit more about the work of the ethics committees and how also the regulatory authorities work in Poland? In order to be able to start a clinical trial in Poland, a positive approval from competence authority as well as a positive opinion from the ethics committee is needed. And those are two separate proceedings uh, that can be done in parallel for drug studies, uh, but ethics committee need to present their opinion to the competent authority be before the approval is granted. And ethics committees in Poland, they are called bioethics committees. They can work uh, alongside regional chamber of physicians, uh, medical universities or universities with medical faculty, or medical research and development units. And all of those committees, they can give their opinion on all the kind of medical research, including clinical trials of drug and medical devices. And do you have also a central ethics committee um, and local ethics committees? What, what kind of ethics committees or how do they act to, together? So in contrary to some of the European countries, the submission is made uh, only to one committee, uh, even for the multicentric studies. And this is a committee that is right according to the location of the country coordinator. And the central committee um, asks local committees for an opinion. So the local committees, they have 14 days to give their opinion back to the central committee, but there is only one decision made by the central one. Okay. An application uh, for approval from the competent authority is also needs to be made. And there is one competent authority in Poland, and it's a president of the office for the registration of medical products, medical devices, and biocidal products. And the timeline for the approval is 60 days after the um, uh, submission package is considered complete, which, and it is also 60 days for the bioethics committee opinion. But it's not 60 days after we have the ethics approval. The ethics approval just needs to be sent to the committee authority at the end. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And uh, bioethics committees, they usually give their opinion in around 45 days, which is still before competent authority deadline. Okay. And uh, the 60 days count since the application is complete. Okay. Okay, that means uh, that the process is quite similar to other countries except that you need to um, also submit the ethics approval at the end to the competent authority, uh, which is not the case in all other countries. But according to my experience, it's not the competent authority approval, which is time limiting or the bottleneck at the end, but it's a contract with the site. 
Yeah, they need sometimes extremely long to get the, the contract signed and without signature on the contract we cannot release study drug. So do you have an advice for us um, how we can speed up that process in Poland? Just to clarify, the Ethics Committee itself uh, submits their opinion to the um, competent authority. Okay. But when it comes to contracts, a uh, huge change uh, took place in October 2018 and since then no longer fully executed contracts are needed to be submitted for the approval and opinion. Um, so that means that we are already saving some time uh, compared to the delays that uh, there used to be. And um, good approach to also save some time uh, on the contract negotiations with the site. It might be to just ask the site or use the templates that they've already had before, not necessarily start from uh, scratch uh, every time. Very good approach. Don't reinvent the wheel again and again and again. Thanks. Yeah. Um, let's speak about inspections. Yeah, and what kind of inspections can we expect in Poland? For GCP inspections, the official procedures are conducted by the inspectors that are authorized by the competent authority, so the president of the office. Uh, however, we can also expect inspections from the foreign agencies, such as, for example, the Food and Drug Administration uh, agency, in case uh, the drug is considered to be registered in the United States. And we can expect inspections at the investigational sites, but uh, also at the sponsor sites, at the CRO, or any other place that it would be considered necessary by the competent authority. And there are two types of inspections, either a routine inspection and we are notified about this one 30 days before it takes place. However, in a situation that there is a suspicion of a patient's health or life being at risk, the unannounced uh, inspection can take place without uh, prior notice. And I think it's also interesting to mention now that we are talking about inspections that there are also two other institutions in Poland that supervise the conduct of clinical trials and so for example the pharmacy hospital supervision uh, in regard uh, to their participation in clinical trials and in regard uh, to the storage of the um, investigational medicinal product, it lies within the competences of the uh, chief pharmaceutical inspector. And the other institution is Commissioner for Patients' Rights uh, that start explanatory proceedings in case uh, there is a suspicion of a patients' rights violation. Okay, thanks Joanna. Up to now we spoke mainly about drug studies. Let's change the topic slightly. You know the EU um, uh, expects the implant implementation of the MDR very soon and that has a m major impact on all EU countries. Um, what do you expect for Poland? Yeah. What kind of impact, what changes do you expect? What will change in Poland is, for example, that now more products will be a subject to a supervision of a notified bodies. And this includes, for example, class 1 surgical devices. This was not the case, the case uh, before. Um, but also some um, medical devices will change their class to a higher one, as well as there are non-medical products that will be also a subject to the supervision of a notified bodies. And there will be um, higher requirements, more requirements regarding the documentation of the product both before and after it is launched on the market. But what is more important is that now that the, the uh, regulation will be implemented, not the directive, is that the harmonization will take place between the individual uh, member states when it comes to the implementation of methods. Yeah, that means also for medical device studies we need, like for drug studies, ethics approval, competent authority approval. Will it be the same competent authority, like for drug studies? Uh, the competent authority after the um, uh, regulation is applicable, yes, it will be also the president of the office for um, medical products, medical devices and biocidal products. Okay, 
And it's the same, you need an ethics approval first. The ethics committee will transfer the ethics approval then to the competent authority. For medical devices, it's a bit different. So the proceedings uh, cannot be done in uh, parallel. For uh, drug studies, yes, we can apply to both competent authority and ethics committee at the same time. However, for medical devices, we first need to um, apply for the opinion of the ethics committee and only then after we receive it to the competent authority. Okay. One personal question regarding my experience with competent authority in Poland. A couple of years ago, uh, they had a huge manpower problem. Uh, I think there worked only three people to, to review all the studies con uh, conducted there. And you said already the number of studies it's on the seventh place already um, did it change um, or did they change the process do they have also the possibility of uh, implicit approval there yes we have cases of implicit approval uh, timelines need to be kept so it means that in case um, the competent authority does not require any additional information from us and they do not give a decision within 60 days but we received positive opinion from the ethics committee it means that uh, according to the polish pharmaceutical law we can start our clinical trials however implicit approval does not apply in cases that um, imp is uh, considered to be used for gene therapy, cell therapy, or it uh, contains genetically modified organisms. In that case, also the timeline can be prolonged for the decision of the competent authority for another 90 days. Okay, that's good to hear that they uh, improved the whole process already. Joanna, let's come to the end. And what I like to ask at the end of each interview what would you recommend uh, to a sponsor who would like to conduct studies in Poland? Uh, what should they keep in mind? What should they avoid to be frustrated afterwards to run a study um, well? I would like to point out again that Poland is a developed country and it needs to be considered when looking for appropriate site to conduct clinical trials. But Poland has so much to offer. Many investigators that are competent, that are motivated. So Poland makes a great partner for companies uh, that conduct clinical trials. And as I mentioned before, Poland is a market of oncological research, but there is a wide population of people, 38 million, that are potential patients also for other indications. The cost is attractive. It cannot be expected to be outstandingly lower, but it's still attractive compared to the Western Europe while still collecting high quality of data and ensuring safe uh, conduct of the trial. So I would just like to ask not to waste the potential that lies uh, within Poland when it comes to clinical trials. Thank you very much, Joanna. It was very interesting to speak with you about Poland. Thank you for the invitation. It was great to be here. Thanks. I hope you like also our video. Please leave your comments, subscribe our channel and take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.